Hey, this is Kerry Smith, and I'm sitting here with Amar Shaw. We're both with Client First Capital. And um, today, Amar and I are talking about planning ahead for diminished capacity. So, you know, one of the things that we know today is medicine and and has has advanced to a point that we live longer, or at least we have the ability to live longer, but that doesn't always mean that we live better. And things like dementia and, and those and those sorts of other types of diseases can have an impact on the quality of our life, but also in, in how we just manage day to day. And the best thing to do is to plan ahead uh, for those kinds of scenarios. Yeah. I think it's key with planning is that we plan for the certainty of uncertainty, right? So we're, we are certain that there are a lot of things that we don't know that are going to happen. But as we live longer, like you mentioned, we tend to need more help, right? And setting a foundation or some structure around getting that help when you need it is, from a planning perspective, uh, really important. But not only from planning, but from family harmony and uh you know making sure that everything is integrated really well so let's start off with this by talking about the first i would call cornerstone or principle around that is just being honest with yourself right carrie what is that take that away yeah you know so um you, you know a lot of times whenever you're starting to experience something even even something like forgetfulness or dementia or, you know, some sort of diminished capacity, you might be the first person who notices it, right? And it's natural for us not want to not want to believe it, to think it's something just situational that we'll get past it, right? But it's important, especially if you are starting to notice some, some symptoms, um, to just be honest with yourself, right? And, um, and, and just that, that ability to just deal with with what may or you know possibly it's not happening but nonetheless um just a, that honesty with oneself is i think just a crucial step in in being able to uh um to start the planning process and making sure that that you're that you're you know making plans for what could happen yeah i often find that with families that have wealth right they say, well, there's more than enough and so-and-so can figure it out, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's not that hard or whatever. Um, I feel that, you know, that's being disingenuous because, you know, when, when somebody loses a loved one, right, they're not in the right emotional state to start to figure things out, right? That's right. And especially we live in this age where everything is digital, right? Like, um, you know, how many people actually get paper statements anymore, right? Like, and if you don't get paper statements, how do you, your heirs know where things are, how much you have, where they have it, right? So, you know, being honest, I feel encapsulates, encapsulates your why this is important, right? And, and I feel like the other thing that's also for, for most people, uh, once, once they figure out their why that, uh, why this is important, the second part of that is that they would like to have some control or some yeah. influence and what that process looks like. And you can only get that if you start early. So yeah, you, you, you know, it's control is, you know, especially if someone has um, kind of overseen their investments and overseen their retirement funds and so forth. They're used to having that control. But if you plan early and bring in your family members or your spouse or others, you actually, I think, extend your ability to have control because you're bringing someone in while you're of sound mind and you're able to have these conversations. They can understand your strategy and the work that you've done and what what has gotten you to where you are financially. And and it makes it easier, I think, for them if something does happen to make sure that there's continuity and that that continues to to happen. And so by bringing someone else in and, and helping them understand where you're at might actually give you more control than less control. Um, I think intuitively it might not feel that way at first, but I think it actually does give you more control. Yeah, I absolutely agree, uh, Carrie. And, you know, we work with a lot of corporate executives that are retired business owners that have passed their businesses on or sold their businesses. Right. So we see this a lot. Right. And mm -hmm. 
I can't tell you how many times I've seen uh, a situation where one spouse totally understands the finances, their investments, why they own what they have, but the other spouse has has some knowledge, but not to the level where they can execute, right? That's right. So I'm going to harp on a word that you said, which is continuity, right? So um, I think this was in 2009 or 2010. I was working at a firm and we had one spouse that passed away and the surviving spouse got got all the assets, you know, organized, retitled, et cetera. And then about two or three months later, that, that person had this epiphany. He's like, why do I own all this? I have all this money. Why do I need all these private equity investments, large cap investments, small cap? It, you know, it's just creating stress for that individual because these investments were going up and down quite a bit, you know, and sold everything and put everything in CDs, right? Yeah. And, and, and when I think about this, you know, a life event shouldn't be a point in time where your investment strategy or your, your holdings need to take a drastic change, right? And, uh, you, you know, you can create continuity, you can create more control, you can kind of have a, a process of education of how you make decisions with your investments over a period of time that can lend to benefit your, your whole family's financial picture because those investments will continue. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and the, the last thing you want to be doing when you're dealing with someone who's incapacitated um, and all of a sudden you have to be the decision maker is you don't want to be dealing with the stress and the, do I need to change the strategy and things of that nature. Whereas if you understand the strategy and you understand where everything is and you understand why it is the way it is, you won't feel that pressure or that stress um, to um, to make changes immediately. And you can deal with those things later once you're you know not in a, such a stressful situation. Yeah, exactly. So the last part here and uh, I, I think so. So we started with honesty, started making sure that you have control. So you have some influence in the plan, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you communicate this, right? So I, I think communication is a big part of this, right? Like how do you get somebody else involved? And what does the other person look like? Um, there are many different uh, financial pictures and there's also many financial different situations, right? That's right. You could be in an environment where your spouse has predeceased you and your children may have predeceased you. You could be in a situation where, you know, you have other people that are in your family, but nobody has ever had the time or the, the knowledge or expertise to deal with your type of assets, right? So creating that structure is very important to allow for that communication. So a couple of tips here. Number one is make sure you have your legal documents in mm -hmm. order, right? And, and you've identified the right people for the right roles, right? And they don't have to be all the same person. And I think that's important to kind of uh, get comfortable with, right? So you could have somebody that's in charge with all the healthcare type decisions, right? Which could right. be a totally different person that's related to all the investment type decisions, right? This, The second part here is maybe having a family meeting or communication with uh, uh, family members to, to talk about the path that of the investments and whatnot will allow uh, the person that's taking on the role to have some support, right? When they're making those type of decisions, right? That's right. Uh, another part of this could be hiring an independent private fiduciary or a trustee that does this as a professional job where you can kind of build that relationship while you're uh, able to and then have that continuity when when you're not there so uh or not able to yeah that's right that's right yeah, yeah amar that's a you know good discussion and you, you know you, you phrased it earlier that you, you know you 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 plan ahead for the things that you know that that even may never happen right but it's but it's just important to have a plan and so um and this is a this is a tough topic for for many people, but but one that's I believe is easy enough to tackle, right? If you just if you just be honest with yourself and start the process. Yeah, it's probably 
probably uh, that, that's why people don't tackle it, right? Yes. <laughs> they try to avoid it as long as possible. But, but hey, if you like our video, please like and subscribe. It helps all the YouTube algorithms and everything else like that. We also have a great newsletter that comes out once a month and it's, you know, goes over topics that are around charitable planning, taxes, estate planning, and investments. Uh, if you'd like that, just head on over to our website. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Mark. Bye.